All right, so we are back with part two of this series and I hope you enjoyed the first part where we did the texturing of that little plant eater creature. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the link of the part one video is in the description below. Make sure to check it out to uh, continue with this video. If you want to just follow along where we are left off, you can get the scene files when you are a patron of mine. The link is in the description if you want to um, get the scene files, the textures and the substance painter files as well. And before we jump into the Maya side of things, I really want to thank Eric Newman for providing me the model, the plant eater creature. He's a very talented artist and I really enjoy the collaboration with him. His links um, are in the description below, so check it out. Um, give him a thumbs up or like his artwork on ArtStation. I really appreciate that. And thanks again, Eric, for your continued support on my Discord as well. Uh, it's really nice to um, see you, you progress and see your work as well. So thanks again. All right, so we are back in Maya. I hope you enjoyed the texturing part in Substance. So now all we got to do is import our model and import the textures and just get going from there. So uh, let's head over to the project and get everything inside. All right, and if you're wondering how my Maya is set up, I do have a video on um, tips on how I set up my Maya. So be sure to check that out to follow along and to know my render settings and my viewport configuration. Anyways, the first thing what I want to do is I want to roughly place my camera to um, a good kind of um, framing. So I'm using the perspective and then I'm using the shortcut to create a camera from view. And this will be my render camera. Also, I'm uh, then looking through that and making sure I'm showing up the frustum. So right now I have this um, portray format, which I always like to use because of social media. This is the perfect format for those streams. And then I got to set my focal length. I always like a higher focal length. Let's try uh, maybe a 55 lens. We can go a little bit higher, but um, you do want to see those fins. So you, you probably don't want to exaggerate that. So what I'm doing now, I'm kind of looking for a nice um, framing. I think this kind of works. And then I'm locking my camera. That way I can now be in perspective mode and everything will be just fine. And then if in my render view, I can always render from that camera and I always have the same kind of render. So um, let's just assign a standard surface shader to everything, AI standard surface. And this will be my base shader, which I'm setting up now to be um, uh, my preset here of a neutral gray shader, which is essentially a 0.18 and a pretty rough um, texture. And then I'm starting to uh, light it up. So I, I, I want this contrasty high key lighting. So I'm, I'm first creating an area light which I'm placing towards the side. We can also enable shading in the viewport to kind of have a rough idea what the render will be like. So obviously you just, you just got to increase your lighting maybe to a unit of 12. Uh, I'm not sure why we don't see it. Just got to boost it up a little bit more. Um, and so as I said, I want to kind of have this strong backlit feel to it. And then I want to have a strong top light as well and a fill from the other side. So essentially this will be my um, hot rim light coming from here, which will be illuminating the teeth from the side and all that. And I'm just placing them roughly now, and then we will be fine tuning them later. So let me just put one on the other side, which is kind of more like a fill. And then we can also have one more light um, coming from the back, which um, will help just shape the round surface of the plant eater itself. So something like that. And then for colors, I'm thinking um, that we will have a kind of a, a warm color for the, the rim lights um, and then a top light, which is a bit cooler. So I'm going to color temperature and going maybe to something um, warm. I'm not even sure this does not work. So we maybe use colors instead. They seem to work. So let's just go for something warm. And then, as I said, we maybe try for this one, which is the fill. We just go for something a bit blue. But again, this will is subject to change. We don't want to go too crazy now with those colors. We first want to get in the shading um, right. And then also I want to create an, um, a, a spotlight from the top, which will be our hot sunlight or whatever, which will help to create that nice cone effect and just a, the hotness like from the top, right? So this is essentially my rough lighting setup, which I am going for. If we boost up the exposure on the spotlight, we will see that it will start to burn out from the top. But this is essentially what I want to see. I'm not sure it does not work. It's not supported in the viewport properly. Um, but this again is my shot lighting. So I'm just grouping this up and call this 
LGT underscore shot. I am hiding this and then I'm creating a new light, which is my um, look dev light, which is a sky dome light, which will get the same kind of texture as I had in substance. So I'm picking file node and picking up my HDRI here. And let's just now render and see what we are getting. So if I render my render cam, this is now the look dev camera um, with the same kind of lighting we had in substance. And this is a good baseline because now you can essentially bring in your textures and light everything as you would uh, in substance. So now let's bring in the textures and see what we're getting. All right, make sure that you have the substance uh, plugin enabled and then you gotta do apply workflow to maps. And then you just wanna hit select the multiple maps and then in the texture output um, where you exported those maps, you wanna go and pick them and just select all of them. You don't really need metalness because we don't have any metalness anyways. So just select them and you can see they will be automatically filled in. Hit apply and this will um, create your shading network. It does create multiple divide nodes, which I don't care about. So um, I'm just deleting them and reconnecting the stuff in between. So we have our base color and you can see it's not set up for aces in any way. So you're also missing um, the correct um, spaces here. So because we rendered EXRs, what I wanna do here, I want to set everything to aces, either ACCG or utility raw. In this case, it doesn't matter because the input maps are just raw essentially. So um, utility raw. So this is all I gotta do if you export um, EXR files from Substance. And then you want to make sure that you have UDIMS enabled, which is also not being set by default. So make sure you do that as well. Set everything uh, to UDIM like that. And then what we have to do one last time is to set up the TX manager. So going to all tab utilities, TX manager, um, select the ones you, you want to convert and then create TX for selected, which will run through all the UDIM tiles and create the TXs as well. So now if I assign the shader, let's say, um, to everything except um, a few things, except the saliva, I guess, and we can now just um, assign this to everything and make sure we maybe name it um, properly. Let's just call this plant eater like that. And we do have displacement maps connected, height map is there. So if I render now, let's see what we get. Let's just say first and then hit play to initiate the Arnold render. And then once your render is starting, this is how it looks. And it's obviously a bit different than what it was in substance, but this is because uh, a lot of factors, it's not the same render engine and it's a maybe different light rotation and also it's a bit noisy. Um, so what I always like to do, I will be creating um, different kinds of types of the same shader and I'll assign, for instance, a different shader to the pot than to the fins and to the teeth. They will be a little bit different because I don't have a map for subsurface scattering. So I want to control that independently to give more control in the look dev. So in the sky dome light, I first want to change the light samples to be three. So it's nice and clean on default. And this is my reference, as I said. So now let's just keep working and assign first a shader for the saliva. So I'm selecting that in my um, material list. I'm right clicking this, assigning a new standard surface shader. And the saliva is quite straightforward. It's essentially just a, a glass shader with some kind of transparency. And also we do have some um, imagers on. Let me just disable them for now. Um, like that. So we don't need to be bothered by that. So for the saliva itself, I, I do wanna make sure that my base color is disabled. My roughness is to zero, so it's nice and specky. And then in a transmission, I just want to enable that to get a kind of a see-through saliva shader. And then in the scatter, I want to create some kind of greenish kind of color. That way we have some nice um, looking scatter fogginess um, for our little guy here. And this is obviously a bit too much in terms of the scatter, but I think it all can also be a little bit more on the yellow side. And then again, we need to adjust the depth. So the higher it is, the less of that scatter you will see. 
and I think just something which is not fully clear will give you a kind of a good look. I think this works uh, pretty well for the saliva pass. So um, let's just hide this uh, shader here and jump to the next one. And I will be just um, duplicating this plant eater material, edit, duplicate with connections to network. This will create me a brand new shader um, with the same connections essentially. Um, but now I want to select the teeth and I want to assign those like that. This will give me a shading engine. Um, I'm not sure where my displacement shader went, but here it is. So again, for the teeth, I do want to have them a little bit translucent. So I'm just heading to the subsurface scattering tab, enabling this, and I'm plugging the same base color to the um, subsurface color as well. That way we get a translucent teeth appearance and we can change the color. So I maybe want to have the teeth to be a little bit reddish, orangey, scattery, change the type to random walk too. And then obviously the scale defines how strong the SSS is traveling through. In my render settings, I wanna make sure my SSS samples are set to three. This will give me a kind of a clean result. And depending on how strong we have our backlights, we will need to adjust the scale a little bit. But I just wanted to have a little bit more um, subsurface scattering to the teeth. Also, I think the roughness is a bit too dry. So I'm creating a range in here. And wherever my roughness is, is this guy. I just want to connect that to my input. Out color R goes to my specular roughness. If I do isolate selected, I can now make sure smooth stepping is on. I can uh, increase input min to create more of a wet look towards the base. And that way they should be a lot more shiny. And I think this is working quite well. We don't have any bump maps so, um, or height maps. So I'm just creating a new displacement shader. Um, and then I'm hooking up the height color, which um, hooks up to the red channel, hooks up to the displacement and then the displacement goes to the displacement shader like that. This way, um, auto bump is enabled, and this way I can now um, increase the scale, and we should see some breakup on the teeth. We just have a very subtle height map, and also um, I think the settings um, need to be changed a little bit. But let's just see, I don't see it's um, subdividing or adding bump map. So let's see if we need to increase this even more. Let's just update. Okay, now I can see the bump map is working a little bit stronger. So maybe one is a bit too much. Um, but overall, you can see that there is this kind of little bump effect on it. And I think this works a little a bit better now. Um, so next up, let's just um, have a look at that uh, on those fins here. So let's maybe rename this to teeth quite quick. And then we jump into um, a new connection uh, duplicate here. So plan either duplicate with connections to network. And this will be called uh, fins like that. And also we want to select them in our object list here which are called um, back leaves and I'm assigning the fin shader to it so that way again I have control over the look and feel so I can again increase subsurface scattering we can connect um, the base color again to that shader and play around with the scattering random walk too. Maybe also have this a bit more on the reds and then we can increase it to have it a little bit more translucent. We can even go a little bit more into the purple bluish colors um, just to have a bit more interesting effect. And again, this will be adjusted depending on the lighting, um, but it's just nice to see some kind of breakup. And I like the roughness. We don't want it to be too, um, too wet looking but it won't probably hurt to just contrast it up a tiny bit for the specular roughness. And then let's make sure we also do smooth stepping. Let's just select one, isolate selected, and maybe just really crank it up so um, it will be definitely more reflective. And now you can see we have more texture also because of our normal map applied. We can also make sure we apply the same displacement shader as our original one to just help um, break or add more detail to it. 
All right, so now let's focus on the green material, which is obviously the main shader. And for that to work, I do want to um, work with this material, which is our main shader. And the first thing obviously is uh, let's enable subsurface scattering and connect the base color to the subsurface as well like that. So you can see it's a kind of a repetitive pass a t task just because it's all essentially the same thing. And then random walk two. if I increase my scale, you will now see it's more translucent. We see more light passing through. And especially for this plant, I do want it to be very translucent in the top. And for my color, I'm choosing some kind of orange yellow. Um, this will just help to kind of make it a little bit more fleshy and red looking. And I think just this, it's quite strong. Um, and again, it will be quite heavily affected by the lighting and I think okay now on 10 is probably too strong so maybe go down to five and maybe change the color to be a little bit more um, on the greener tones maybe something like that and I think the overall color is a bit too yellow so I'm creating a color correct node um, AI color correct like that and this will obviously then go into the subsurface color to add additional um, control over the color I think I want to make it um, a little bit darker and a bit more towards green so um, more more like this and then go darker let's reduce the or just uh, gamma down um, just to have it a little bit more crunchy I think it was too yellow looking I think this already uh, looks a little bit better. Maybe I just went a little bit overboard with the gamma. Let's go maybe in 0.8, uh, 0.8. That way it's not super black, I think. So roughly this is um, what I had envisioned for this. And now what we can do now is um, just work a little bit on the pot. So I'm just uh, duplicating this again with input to uh, connection so um, go to edit duplicate with connections to network and this will be our plan pot so let's just type pot and select it in here and assign though this shader and now we have control over that as well so the pot should not be subsurface scattery and we don't want it um, so shiny so again we create a range and this is again the default approach to everything always use ranges to control your map so hooking that up going red to sub uh, to specular roughness and then control it using the slider so we want it to be um, a bit more rough so i'm just lifting the output min so it's a bit more rough and reducing the output max so now we have a nicer let's just increase this a bit more it's just a drier looking uh, base pot and i think this kind of works so now let's create a little um, plane here for our ground, which is our backdrop, which will be going all the way to the back. And we probably want to extend this as well. And extruding this up like that. And then we want to make it a little bit wider and just scale it on the z-axis and then we want to go to the shape go to Arnold tab and apply a subdivision so we have a round backdrop like that and now we want to save and I want to apply a background um, shader to it actually no we can leave it like that I guess or actually let's just do it so assign um, new material and we are looking for the Arnold uh, where is it shadow mats which will then just create the shadow pass um, so now we don't want to have our lighting so we will be now starting to set up the lights so I just I will just be unhiding our light shots which is looking like this and we do have a global um, environment fog which I did not remove so let's just uh, disconnect this here and now we have it disconnected right so we did not change the lighting this is just a default light setup without actually um, doing much with it so let's just first uh, change the layout to be uh, single pane like that and this already works quite well with the strong top-down lighting so all we ought to do now is fine-tune this 
So again, um, we will be using isolate selected on the lights. So I'm just selecting the backlight, hitting isolate selected. And now we can easily see on the left what this light is specifically doing. If I hit W, I can obviously move it and we can place it how we want it. So again, the backlight should help to shape our plant and you do want it um, quite far away. So you have a uniform light intensity and currently the slide has um, no color it has a strong exposure we probably don't want to go too much with it but we do want a little bit to help shape um, the look and feel of the of the fins and obviously the plant itself and the side lighting is there to fill in the shadows which we obviously create by creating these super hot lights so this will be have to be dialed in um, once we see everything together this one is our strong rim light, which is warm, which gives us this nice organic feel. And we can push it up a little bit so we see nice the detail. You can see everything is now lit up. Even the back fins look nice and glowy. And then we do have our top light, which is the spotlight here, which is there to give us our nice um, sunny, bright lighting effect. Also, I want to change our cone angle so we have a little bit larger um, reach which is all the way at the top which is called a cone angle which should now affect a little bit more which will be also controlling our volume fog and then again we do have the exposure and uh, to control how, how strong this will be in the end and if I now look at all together it might be overexposed because we do have our skylight somehow in here let's just update full scene and maybe um, not use the shadow mat for the ground, but instead use a standard surface shader. Um, we do want to have it probably on a neutral gray tone like that. And again, now you can see that we are lighting the ground. So first of all, let's change the spotlight to be way softer using drop off to get us a nice um, fade. So it's not super bright. And then these lights are obviously very close to the ground. So what you can do, change the spread angle, which will in turn increase the intensity of that light. But now you can essentially angle it up so it's not lighting the ground anymore. And then you can reduce the intensity. Also, we need to reduce the intensity of our fill. It's way too bright. And then our top lighting is, has a very crisp shadow, which we also want to change by adjusting the radius. So if you increase the radius here, you will sh uh, get a softer top light. Um, I'm not sure why this is not working yet. We just need to go a bit higher, I guess. There we go. So on 50, it's quite high. It's a quite large scene. Um, we get this nice soft lighting effect. So one last thing which we are missing is that nice peach fuzz. So um, let's just do that. So I'm saving the scene here. And the first thing what I want to do is select everything. I want to apply some uh, X-Gen fur to it. So for the hair, make sure to select all the transforms like this. And then you go to the X-Gen generate menu, interactive grooming splines. I call it fuzz and hit create. And this will create the peach fuzz on all the selected transform objects. And you can see now just by doing this, we have fur all over. We also have it on the inside, which is not what we really want. Um, so let's first go into um, our brush menus and let's go tab, generate. And there is this grooming tools. I want to create the work with the density brush and check the settings for this. And I want to set it to zero. So wherever I paint, um, we are reducing the density. So let me just go ahead and reduce the density where I don't want it. All right, so now let's go to the grooming editor. And what I wanna do is add a modifier, which is a noise modifier, which will help to break up um, the overall shape of this. And we wanna go a little bit excessive, I guess, to just really break it up by increasing the frequency and also uh, the magnitude, which gives us a really strong kind of fuzzy look. And um, also change the thickness of the overall thing. So if you select the fuzz in a top down, 
you do have um, a width scale. So maybe let's go to 0 0.025 uh, to have it really thin. And let's try to add some tapering to it. So we do want to taper it to have the tips be thin. So it's not just like this super strong, thick object that's actually going thinner towards the top. All right, now select the fuzz shape on the on the outliner, right click it, and then we assign a new standard hair material to it. And you can see it's getting black now. And now let's see uh, if we hit render now, we should see essentially the X-Gen fur on it. And we should also see a black hair material on it as well. You can see everything got a little bit darker. Um, if we just render this region, you can see that we see something here, um, which is essentially some kind of something, right? Supposed to be peach fuzz, right? So what you want to do, change the melanin to zero. So it's essentially a white, um, white hair like that. And then you can play with the roughness, make it a little bit, a little bit drier looking. This will be looking a little bit more interesting. And now you should see that we get this uh, peach fuzz on it. Obviously render settings are low. So let's put them up to six and that will help us to really see them. And you can see it looks nice and fluffy now. If we check the sides here, we should also see um, quite a nice uh, peach fuzz on the sides here. And I think this gives us a nice velvety look. And I think this is exactly what I want. We might be a bit too thin on the width. So um, in the X-Gen settings, if you select a top node here, you can go to a width scale and let's just double it up to 0.05. This is obviously depending on your scene scale. So uh, what I want to do last is create the volume lighting, which just helps to give you, um, follow your eye or place your eye where you want to see um, the action, right? So I want to create this cone on top. So for what for it to work, uh, you got to create um, AI atmosphere volume which I already have so I'm just selecting that and you can see everything will get blown out the reason for that is that every light is contributing to this so in, in the lights we created I want to slide the volume to zero so those lights will not be contributing to this volume um, effect right so if I, if I have all the lights to zero um, you won't see it anymore so if I go to the spotlight shape as well volume off you can see it's essentially gone um, and then you can really subtly just blend it in and you will see um, the effect because our cone angle is now so large the cloud is affected everywhere so in the cone angle if I reduce that I just want this beam of light you can see I'm making it very thin something like that and the drop off is maybe a little bit strong and now you you can clearly see the effect of this and you might be wondering why do I have this kind of cloud pattern and this is because I do have a noise texture applied and I'll be showing you in a second how I set that up so if I go back to my um, shape, um, panel and um, break up the layouts to top and bottom or just stack them essentially um, if I select the if I select the environment shader here and I frame the ins and outs, you will see that I have an AI noise connected to a range connected to the RGB density and the noise itself has a small scale and then you can see um, this breakup. Last but not least, what I did, I enabled a few lens effects. One was color correcting it to have it a little bit darker, I believe, and uh, lifting the blacks somewhat and then a lens effects which gives us some glow. Obviously these settings don't work with this render. So let's um, make sure that our radius is a bit larger and our intensity is a lot less, maybe 0.025. Um, this, this bottom light here is definitely too strong, which is um, this guy. So let's just try to place this a little bit nicer. Let's just move this up a little and maybe rotate it downwards. Not too much. We don't want to have it excessively on the ground, um, but we can definitely move it to shape it a little bit nicer. I think this is a bit better. We can see it shaping a little bit better and it's hitting the leaves quite nice. I think the overall intensity is a bit much though. So I just reduce it a few, few, a few steps down 
so now let's uh, render this. I think uh, the the fins are also a bit excessive in terms of subsurface scattering. So that's what I meant. We need to adjust um, the scale a little bit. So let's just reduce that. See, obviously this starts to glow quite fast. So I'm just reducing that. And it's also maybe a bit too purple. So I'm just desaturating the color as well. Yeah, that works better. And then we can maybe increase the scale a little. I think that works better. So now let's just uh, render this thing in high settings and see what we get. Alright now, this was a quick 3 minute render with quite high settings, 6, 2, 2, 1, 4. And just looking at it, I can see a few things with which I spotted. So I would probably adjust the roughness on the leaves a little bit separately. There is way too strong subsurface scattering on um, the skin of the green um, head object. But all in all, I pretty much like the overall effect what it presents. So with the fog and just the showcasing of um, the little plant eaters. So obviously, um, this is just showing the technique how to get things in and how to adjust things. And obviously, this is up to you to make it look prettier. So I would be um, really appreciate. I would really appreciate if you can show me your renders, uh, what you came up with the model and these techniques. I will be sharing this Maya scene with my patrons, so be sure to be one of them to follow along. And the model again was uh, provided by Eric Newman. His links are in the description below. Check out his art station and give him a shout out if you use his model. And uh, thanks everyone and uh, yeah. Alright, so this sums up the two-part series of the Plant Eater where we started out with the texturing part and part two was the shading, look, dev, lighting, X-Gen, all the fancy stuff part. And I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more of this, please leave me a thumbs up and also comment below if you have other ideas, other suggestions for my channel. So thanks everyone and I will see you in the next one.